Let's fold the National League. Fred again? Let's just name a few. But it's the festival's array of hip hop artists that really has me intrigued. Because something weird is happening in the world of hip hop. Just back in 2018, R&B hip hop was declared the most dominant genre in the U.S. Music streaming platforms became an for consumer music, and eight of the top ten most streamed artists were rappers. From 2015 to 2018, hip hop was experienced a sort of golden era. Big names like Kanye West proved to have a great album in them. Drake and Kendrick Lamar were finally reaching for a superstar, and rising sensations like XXX Tentacion were pretty much viral hits of their own. But today, the genre is already showing signs of fatigue. According to Lumos' 2023 mid-year report, R&B hip hop still clings to the largest market share of any genre in the U.S. 25.9%, but that's a slight dip from last year's 26.9%, which was already a dip from 2021's 27.7%, and this is much more experiencing record breaking the swing numbers. So, what's going on? Well, it's clear hip hop is facing a number of challenges. Heavy hitters like Drake, Kendrick, and Post Malone are venturing into different phases of their careers, but the class are losing the next big hit. The premature loss of potential superstars like Pop Smoke, Juice World, and XXX Tentacion has left an unfilled void in the genre's core, and finally, there just seems to be a shortage of emerging talents. To send to start it. There's also external influences like COVID and TikTok that have had a massive impact on the industry and the way we consume this kind of music. But as much as these challenges post threats, they also present a opportunity for an artistic revolution. One that's already begun. It's the dawn of a new era in hip hop. I <laughs> fucking hip hop as close relatives. Because hip hop spawned for the same spirit of rebellion. Emerging from the marginalized communities of the Bronx, it offered a platform for the voiceless. Using storytelling and social commentary, it became a musical beacon of hope and resistance. <laughs> Or it was a celebration of self expression, a testament to the experience of its creators, the struggles, the injustices, the everyday battles of life in the inner city, all laid bare over a relentless beat. Audiences and extending its longevity. The late 90s and 2000s then saw the rise of commercial hip hop. Not that Jay Z were not only rappers, but savvy businessmen who capitalized on the popularity of the genre. You have a TV roster to break who leveraged the polish and popular and sound that appealed to a broader mainstream audience. And then there's someone like Kanye West, who both contributed to commercialization of hip hop, yet defied it in very unique ways. He challenged the dominant gangster rap of the time, offering more introspective lyrics. He experimented sonically with wider trends in hip hop, and of course, has shown a willingness to go against popular opinion. I'm really happy for you. I'm going to finish. My Beyonce has one of the best videos of all time. While these artists have undoubtedly contributed to hip hop's growth and global recognition, the shift towards commercialization has diluted the genre's rebellious edge. Today's hip hop tracks are designed to ensure commercial success, featuring catchy hooks, polished production, and guest appearances from other popular artists. They lack the rawness, originality, and social commentary that find the ability to However, that sort of focus has been entirely lost in hip hop. But I don't think they'll walk out of the 70s because we're only happy against the mainstream. Hip hop, yeah. Also, became its own new town. This era didn't start because of Jesus. It didn't even begin with 
But am I a third album my drop? It was likely the year's most divisive release. There were a lot of worries. I browsed some parts of the and I figured out there was a lot of emotion. But beyond that, let's do that this was the perfect moment for the genre. The blueprint that laid the foundation for how hip hop was set to evolve. It signifies five essential elements. Firstly, there's technological advancements to think. With access to digital audio workstations and increasingly portable synthesizers, Amaya was self-produced at MIA's home studio in LA, but also atop the mine pyramids in Mexico, and later during a vacation in Hawaii. The studio equipment has become increasingly portable and affordable. In coming years, artists will be able to manipulate the sound in ways and in places that were not possible before. It's how college roommates like hip hop including can crash tracks around the sound of their work. Or how Baltimore rapper JPEG Mafia into something we've never heard before. Bedroom has become the new studio, and anything within it, the instrument ready to be sampled and turned on. We like had that in case I sort of like a thing that saw this and it wasn't like some type of it was just something that ended up happening. Maya also addressed complex themes around information politics, how much we can rely on our resources, the sanctity of our online data, and the future of the digital age. <laughs> Instagram and Snapchat, these subjects have become more fun. Now, it has always been a platform for addressing societal and political issues. But as these complexities grow, artists are experimenting with new ways to explore and express these things, making music more layered and intricate. The fourth effort from Hart to Back on Jewels brings out themes like race brutality, torch media, and human politics. And the dawn of the Alignment, affecting the Ukraine and the revolution in progress. <laughs> Then there's something like the joint effort from Kidding Kanye West that meditates on mental health and redemption during the period when mental health is a great concern. It's these people and personal issues that create a stronger connection between the music and the listener. It takes on a larger role in one's life and simply that create a stronger connection between music and listen. It takes on a larger role in one's life and simply Most 
obvious was the album's cover art, featuring a collage of digital music players. There's also the album's title that was stylized in lead speak, the internet's alternative alphabet, but also deliberate attempt to avoid detection by online search engines. Also took full advantage of the internet during the album. Also took full advantage of the internet during the album. Also took full advantage. Also took full advantage. Also took full. Also took. Also took. Also took. Also took full advantage of the internet during the album's promotion. After releasing a series of tracks online and a short film music video that caused widespread controversy, and I became the most blogged about artist for weeks. The advent of the internet was already proving to transform how music would be shared and discovered. And Spotify still wouldn't reach the United States for another year. It was internet culture that significantly contributed to the rise of groups like Death Grips. Your album No Love Good Web was notoriously self Your album No Love Deep Web was notoriously self released online for free. The album Prove All the Label, showcasing the people of the label, showcasing the people of the label. And Brockhampton, a collective that formed in an online form, used the internet and streaming to saturate the market and build a following. It allowed them to experiment with a different style. When it, it allowed them to experiment with a different style. With a different style. When it, with a different style. When it, and with a different style when it came. With a different style when it came to their major label debut. When it comes down to controversy, it was a bad a bold move, even for a group with an established fan base. Things to A bold move, even for a group with an established fan base. Thanks to streaming platforms, established fan base. Established fan base. Established fan base. They established fan base. Established fan base. Thanks to streaming platforms and scale the move, even for a group with an established fan base. A move, even for a group with an established fan base. Thanks to streaming platforms and scale the unit, artists were more concerned with creating all things community. Oh, a move, even for a group with an established fan base. Thanks to streaming platforms and scale the internet, artists were more concerned with creating authentic and meaningful art than with being commercially appealing or achieving mainstream success. It actually made a living creating the music. I was literally trying to make money for this for so fucking long, but I was trying to make money for this for so trying to make money for this for so fucking long, but trying to make trying to make money for this. Trying to make money from it for so fucking long, bro. By the time I actually started making money, from it, I was just like, getting money from it, I was just like, getting money from it, I was just like, getting money from it, I was just like, got it. But your music to me doesn't look sound like you're trying to make money from it. Got it. But your music to me, got it. But your music, got it. But got it. But but your music to me doesn't sound like you're trying to make money off of music. No, that that wasn't even sound like you're trying to make money off of music. No, that that wasn't even. No, that no one. No, that no one. No, that no one. No, that no one needs to like you in the middle of the group choices. Aesthetically, et cetera, 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 yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to get paid. 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 I'm I do want money so I can live. 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 I'm not. I just need to know I'm only a little MIA was already known for their diverse set of influences and samples from the worlds of electric flash to Bollywood and dance. But now, add the desire to innovate on her sound with industrial elements, and you've got something more about pop than she's ever done before. Than she's ever done before. Than she's ever done before. 
than she's ever done before. Than she's ever done. Than she's ever done before. Than she's ever. Than she's ever done before. Artists in the digital age have learned that you've got something more of a pop. You've got something more of a. And you've got something more of Aunt Pop than she's ever done before. Artists in the digital age have learned that experimentation with their sound and hip hop norms, 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 hip -hop norms, hip -hop norms, hip -hop norms helps to create a unique. Hip hop norms helps to create a unique identity. Kanye West has always known this, but his most drastic example came from the inspiration from Massive House, Punk, and Chicago drill music to create the abrasive experimental Yeezus. Most recently, Lil Yachty ventured from his typical trap rap style to create a psychedelic rock opera that sounds closer to Pink Floyd than anything in the realm of hip but his most drastic example came when he drew inspiration from Massive House, Punk, and Chicago drill music to create the abrasive and experimental Yeezus. Most recently, Lil Yachty ventured from his typical trap rap style to create a psychedelic rock opera that most recently, Lil Yachty ventured from his typical rap rap style to create a psychedelic rock record that sounds closer to Pink Floyd than anything in the realm of hip hop. Anything in the realm of hip hop, then anything in the realm of hip hop, then anything in the realm of hip hop, then anything in the realm of 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 hip hop, 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 then